Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on anesthesia for a patient with a cardiac implantable electronic device, CIED. Cardiac implantable electronic devices refers to any implantable cardioverter defibrillator, ICD, cardiac pacemaker, or cardiac resynchronization therapy device. Indications of CIEDs for permanent pacemakers to treat arrhythmias associated with syncope, dizziness, and cardiac failure, such as AV block, sick sinus syndrome, and other bradyarrhythmias. For biventricular pacemakers, these are used for symptomatic patients with moderate to severe cardiac failure with a left ventricular ejection fraction of less than 35% and a widened QRS interval. These pacemakers optimize the timing of right and left ventricular contraction, which is otherwise uncoordinated with a sole right ventricular pacing. Implantable cardioverter defibrillators abilities includes it senses and analyzes myocardial electrical activity and are capable of pacing and shock therapy when necessary. These are used for post-cardiac arrest, for secondary prevention in patients who have survived a cardiac arrest, for ventricular arrhythmias, for secondary prevention in patients who have survived significant hemodynamic compromise after ventricular arrhythmias, patient groups at high risk of sudden death due to ventricular arrhythmias, which includes long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, cardiomyopathies, and selected patients with congenital heart disease. In post-myocardial infarction, for patients with scar-related ventricular tachycardia risk or significant left ventricular dysfunction. Implantable loop recorders are leadless cardiac monitoring devices that function as diagnostic tools. They have self-contained electrodes capable of recording an ECG. They are either automatically or patient-triggered, for example, via an external activator when arrhythmias or symptoms arise. Indications include recurrent unexplained syncopes, palpitations, and chronic AF. Permanent pacemakers are devices implanted subcutaneously, usually outside the thorax, that provide permanent cardiac pacing. They effectively treat a broad range of cardiac arrhythmias by generating an electrical impulse to re-establish regular myocardial contraction. They also encompass treatment modalities for patients with heart failure by provision of cardiac resynchronization therapy and defibrillator functions to treat tachyarrhythmias. Permanent cardiac pacemakers consist of a titanium casing, the pulse generator, which consists of the battery, usually lithium iodide, and electronic circuitry, which consists of a silicon chip and electronic sensing and output circuitry, which analyzes the cardiac rhythm and paces as programmed. Current delivery may be to a single cardiac chamber or to multiple chambers. The pacing leads may be unipolar or bipolar. Unipolar is typical, i.e. one intracardiac electrode, with the cathode being a single electrode at the pacing tip and A0 being the pacemaker box. For bipolar pacing leads, the cathode is the electrode at the pacing tip and the A0 lies on the lead itself just proximal to the cathode tip. This reduces the susceptibility of the device to electromagnetic interference. The current returns to the pacemaker via the body. The heart electrode is passed via a central vein. Endocardial placement is typical. Heart electrode may also be placed epicardially. Steroid eluting pacing leads are available and this may reduce inflammation at the site of contact. Mechanism of action. The pacemaker box generates an electrical current between the A node and the cathode. Current travels via the lead to reach the myocardium and this initiates a wave of depolarization and contraction. Electrical capture refers to successful pacing induced depolarization. Stimulation threshold refers to minimum electrical stimulus that consistently exceeds the excitation threshold of the myocardial cells to produce cardiac depolarization. The pacemaker responds to sensing of intrinsic electrical activity in single or multiple chambers by either inhibiting or triggering pacing in one or more chambers, depending on the number of leads and the programming of the device. The pacemaker is checked and adjusted via radio frequency programming without requiring removal. 
the recorded data is downloaded for analysis of cardiac function. Generic pacemaker codes will be discussed in the section below. Sensitivity of a pacemaker refers to the minimum intrinsic atrial or ventricular electrical activity measured in millivolts that is sensed by the device set as a margin around the amplitude of a sensed signal and depends on the origin, atrial or ventricular, and the lead type, unipolar or bipolar. Under sensing occurs when the sensitivity of the permanent pacemaker is incorrectly set and the pacemaker fails to detect intrinsic atrial or ventricular activity. Implantable cardioverter defibrillators, ICDs. Conventional ICDs are analogous to pacemaker devices but ICDs have a larger generator which houses electronic circuitry, batteries and a capacitor. Mechanism of action Anti-tachycardia pacing ICD continuously senses and analyzes native electrical activity to detect VT or VF. A programmed burst of overdrive pacing is used to attempt to terminate VT. Defibrillation from an ICD if anti-tachycardia pacing fails, a capacitor within the ICD will charge and then release a shock which passes between the defibrillator coils located on the ventricular lead or alternatively, the box acts as one coil with a single ventricular lead coil. Defibrillation requires about 750 volts to deliver an output of 30 to 45 Joule and defibrillation is painful. Defibrillation utilizes more battery life or capacity than anti-tachycardia pacing. Anti-bradycardia function is present to pace in the event of post-shock bradyarrhythmias. Insertion of CIEDs. Overall complication rate is 7.5%. Examples include lead displacement 4.8%, pneumothorax 3.7% and infection 1.5%. Permanent pacemakers. In adults, pacemakers are usually implanted subcutaneously below the left clavicle. Transvenous access is commonly via either the left cephalic vein, subclavian vein, or axillary veins. In pediatric patients, the pacemaker may be implanted in other locations, including the abdominal wall. The atrial lead is generally positioned in the right atrial appendage. The ventricular lead is generally positioned in the right ventricular apex. For biventricular systems, this has an additional lead that simulates the wall of the left ventricle, for example by passing a lead into the coronary sinus by the right atrium. Leadless pacemaker. This is a small sensing and pacing device entirely contained within the right ventricle with no leads. Implantable cardioverter defibrillators, ICDs. Typical placement. ICDs are implanted similarly to pacemakers, transvenous leads sense and deliver shock therapy as required. Subcutaneous ICD is a less invasive and subcutaneous version and is designed for patients with difficult venous access or complex cardiac anatomy. The lead is placed subcutaneously in the midline and connects to a pulse generator sited in the left axilla. Defibrillation. The device analyzes and treats ventricular arrhythmias by delivering an 80 joule biphasic shock without the need for endovascular lead placement. Disadvantages. The battery longevity is shorter than conventional ICDs. Pacing capabilities are limited to post-shock pacing only. Preoperative management. History. Preop assessment is directed particularly towards the cardiovascular system. The presence of a CIED indicates a high likelihood of coexisting significant cardiac disease such as severe cardiomyopathy, conduction system disease, myocardial ischemia, and history of cardiac arrest, etc. This warrants conduct of a thorough history and examination. Inquire any symptoms suggesting device malfunction, such as dizziness, syncope, and indicators of deteriorating cardiac function, such as dyspnea, poor exercise tolerance, fatigue, autopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, nocturnal cough, with or without pink frotty sputum, wheeze, cold peripheries and weight loss, peripheral edema, ascites, nausea, anorexia, facial engorgement, and epistaxis. Cardiovascular diseases should be ideally investigated and managed well preoperatively. Prescribed antiarrhythmic agents should be continued in the perioperative period. 
determine whether a patient has a cardiac implantable electronic device by interviewing the patient or other sources, reviewing medical records, reviewing chest x-rays and electrocardiograms. Determine the cardiac implantable electronic device type and manufacturer. Review the pacemaker patient identification card, which has pacemaker center details, the date and indication of implantation, manufacturer, model, and serial number. The most recent CIED interrogation report, medical records, manufacturer databases, cardiac implantable electronic device clinic records, chest x-ray, etc. can be reviewed. Obtain cardiac implantable electronic device technician contact details and pre-operative instructions. Identify and document the Heart Rhythm Society and Heart Rhythm UK pacemaker codes, which are used to describe pacemaker type and function. The code consists of five letters or positions. The first three describe anti-bradycardia functions, which are always stated. The fourth and fifth positions relate to additional functions, which may be omitted. Position 1. Chamber paste may be O, none, V, ventricle, A, atrium, D, dual. Position 2, sensing chamber, may be O, none, V, ventricle, A, atrium, D, dual. Position 3, refers to response to sensing, may be O, none, T, triggered, I, inhibited, D, dual. Position 4, refers to programmability or rate modulation, may be O, none, P, simple programmable, M, multi-programmable, and R, rate modulation. Rate modulation implies the ability to alter the heart rate in response to the patient's level of activity. Rate adaptive devices alter the pacing rate in response to physiological parameters normally associated with changes in heart rate, such as body movement, QT interval, respiration, temperature, pH, myocardial contractility, and hemoglobin saturation. Position 5, anti-tachycardia functions may be O, none, P, pacing, S, shock, D, dual. Examples, DDD, every atrial event is followed by a ventricular event. If there is no activity in the atrium, it will be paced. After any sensed or paced atrial event, a ventricular event will either be allowed to occur within the allowed time frame, or if it has not occurred, it will be paced. VOO, asynchronous ventricle-only pacing with no regard for underlying rhythm. VVI, ventricle pacing only. Ventricle is sensed and if no event within predetermined time frame, the ventricle is paced. If ventricular activity is sensed, pacemaker is inhibited. Determine the indication for the cardiac implantable electronic device, such as complete AV block, Mobitz type 2 AV block, persistent AV block after anterior MI, symptomatic bradycardias, heart failure, drug-resistant tachyarrhythmias, etc. Determine whether the patient is pacing-dependent. Indicators that the patient is pacing-dependent includes a patient with an absent intrinsic heart rhythm are completely pacing-dependent, a patient with an inadequate intrinsic heart rhythm are relatively or functionally pacing-dependent, CIED implantation due to bradycardia that has caused syncope or other symptoms, or after successful AV node ablation. CIED interrogation shows no evidence of spontaneous ventricular activity when the CIED pacing function is temporarily programmed to a non-tracking mode at the lowest programmable rate. Next, determine the cardiac implantable electronic device functional status. Interrogate the CIED or obtain the most recent interrogation report. Pacemakers are usually checked regularly. Guidelines vary although it is generally considered acceptable for a permanent pacemaker to have been checked within 12 months and an ICD within 6 months. The most recent visit should confirm that the pacemaker system has adequate battery life and normal function. Conventional in-person interrogation involves external placement of a programming head onto the implant for recognition. A cardiac dashboard displayed on the attached programmer provides a summary of the CIED performance during the follow-up interval. Most modern ICDs and some pacemakers have the ability to communicate wirelessly. This permits device interrogation in the patient's home with data transmitted automatically to websites.
The format of CIED checks varies between devices and manufacturers. The check will not provide comprehensive information about the patient's underlying cardiac condition, but will provide some insight into clinical issues that may be relevant in the perioperative period. Key features of a preoperative CIED check includes the device type, pacemaker, ICD or CRTD, pacing percentages, which can be sensing, pacing and chamber, a high percentage of pacing will indicate a high degree of pacemaker dependency. Pacing threshold. The report should confirm an adequate safety margin with the output on the lead pacing amplitude programmed to at least double the pacing threshold to ensure capture. Lead impedance refers to resistance to current flow and trends. Increased lead impedance may suggest lead crush or lead fracture. Reduced lead impedance may suggest insulation defect. Sense PR amplitude, confirmation of appropriate sensing parameters, battery life, ICD features, therapy since last interrogation will be displayed in the form of ATP or shock therapy, total number of therapies that the device has delivered. Current endocardial electrogram displays the current signals from the atrial and ventricular channels, allowing the underlying rate and rhythm to be seen, and any episodes of AF. Alerts. Summary box that highlights any clinical or device functionality issues. Determine whether the device is optimally programmed for the planned procedure. Consult cardiologist and technician of the CIED. ICD specific analysis. The defibrillator safety margin test involves inducing VF under controlled conditions, providing there is no contraindication such as cavity thrombi, to ensure that the device senses detects and terminates the arrhythmia reliably and with adequate energy delivery. This test may or may not be performed. Examination. Note scars, puppet for device. Examine the CVS system and other systems as appropriate. Investigations. Serum electrolytes and blood gas analysis. Electrolyte abnormalities, including hypomagnesemia, acid-based disturbances, or blood gas abnormalities should be corrected as they may influence the stimulation threshold and defibrillation threshold. ECG Preoperative ECG provides confirmation of the expected function, such as AV synchronicity, polarity of pacing, baseline rate, etc. Sole atrial pacing is seen as a single stimulus spike followed by a P wave and then the patient's own QRS complex. Ventricular pacing results in a spike followed by a broad QRS complex. Dual chamber pacing shows features of both atrial and ventricular pacing. In potential pacemaker dependency, pacing spikes occur before all or most beats. Chest X-ray provides information regarding the CIED, the pulse generator and lead position, device-specific identifiers, for example, an ICD can be distinguished from a permanent pacemaker by the presence of one or two thick linear radio opaque shock coils on the right ventricular lead. Number and configuration of leads. Potential malfunction of device such as lead migration with cardiac perforation and lead fracture. Signs of cardiac failure may be seen on chest x-ray such as alveolar edema, curly B lines, cardiomegaly, dilated prominent upper lobe veins, pleural effusions, peribronchial cuffing, and fluid in fissures. Other investigations may be warranted depending on the clinical background and surgical procedure. MRI may be hazardous since the pacemaker may be switched to asynchronous mode, fail altogether, or move within the chest. Consults includes cardiology and device manufacturer representative. Optimization Determine if electromagnetic interference is likely during the procedure. If not likely, do nothing with the device. Reprogramming of a CIED before surgery should be considered under the following circumstances. The patient has significant pacemaker dependency and the procedure involves potential EMI. A cardiac physiologist should be consulted to temporarily reprogram the device to an asynchronous mode. Advanced CIED functions such as rate response functions that uses minute ventilation as the mechanism of regulating pacing should have this program off during surgery as mechanical ventilation may stimulate excessive pacing rates. <laughs>
Sleep and rest mode is a mode where the programmed base rate is gradually reduced during a specified sleep phase. This should be deactivated if late surgery is planned. Defibrillator function and the procedure involves potential EMI. The device should be deactivated immediately before any surgery where EMI is deemed likely. If this is not possible, the application of a magnet should be considered. Magnet application to a CIED A magnetically activated switch may be incorporated into CIEDs to enable alterations of the pacing or defibrillator modes. CIEDs have different magnet responses depending on the model and settings of the device. For example, in a pacemaker, possible responses to magnet application includes asynchronous pacing activated at a fixed pacing rate with a fixed AV delay, rate responsive pacing suspended, diagnostic function initiated and then reverted to its programmed mode of pacing, or no magnet response such as in some leadless pacemakers. Possible responses of an ICD to magnet application includes suspension of anti-tachycardia function, suspension of defibrillator function, no magnet response. Magnet application does not alter the pacing mode of an ICD. The device should revert to programmed baseline settings upon removal of the magnet. Always consult a cardiac physiologist. A magnet may be placed over the cardiac implantable electronic device to alter the pacing function of a CIED to an asynchronous pacing mode in the pacing-dependent patient. For most pacemakers, magnet application will initiate asynchronous pacing at a fixed pacing rate with a fixed AV delay. Magnet-induced asynchronous pacing may result in stimulation during a vulnerable period and induce an arrhythmia such as VF via competitive pacing. In modern pacemakers, the switch to asynchronous pacing is coupled with the next cardiac cycle to avoid competitive pacing. For an ICD, altering the pacing function of an ICD to an asynchronous pacing mode must always be accomplished by reprogramming. This is because magnet application will never alter the pacing mode of an ICD. Applying a magnet may suspend an implantable cardioverter defibrillator's anti-tachycardia function if present. Suspending the anti-tachycardia function of an ICD may be accomplished by reprogramming or magnet application. For most ICDs, there is no reliable means to confirm the magnet response. Some ICDs may have no magnet response. Before suspending the anti-tachycardia function, ensure that the patient is in a monitored environment. Magnet application may suspend a cardiac implantable electronic device's active sensor for rate responsive pacing to prevent undesirable tachycardia. Magnet application is used to deactivate the defibrillator function of an ICD. After application of a magnet, some manufacturers have incorporated audible tones emitted from the ICD to indicate when a magnet has been applied and defibrillator functions have been deactivated. Removal of the magnet at the end of the surgery should promptly reactivate the defibrillator function. Consult a cardiac physiologist. In obese patients or in deep CIEDs, Magnet application may fail to elicit the magnet response. Implantable loop recorders do not deliver any treatment and they present no risk to the patient when electromagnetic interference is encountered. Contact the cardiac physiology department to allow them an opportunity to download any relevant clinical data before the planned surgery as noise created by diatomy may fill up the memory banks of the device and override existing data. Pre-med Blood products, ICU backup or step-down bed depends on the clinical background and the surgical procedure. Intraoperative management Options, local, regional or general anesthesia tailored to the patient's cardiac state and comorbidities, surgical intervention and anesthetist expertise. Reprogramming of the CIED has been discussed in the previous section. It may be done by a cardiac physiologist in the anesthetic room immediately before induction. If an asynchronous mode is deemed necessary, reliable capture at an appropriate rate with hemodynamic stability should be confirmed. Preparations for treating potential dysrhythmias should be available before, during and after all procedures with electromagnetic interference potential. 
such as external defibrillator, external pacemaker, and isoprenaline, which may be required if the pacemaker fails. Monitoring Standard monitoring with or without additional monitoring depending on the case, as required by ASA standards from the beginning of anesthesia until the patient is transferred out of the anesthetizing location. ECG Monitored heart rate may be inaccurate due to double counting of the pacing spike and the QRS complex. ECG should be monitored throughout surgery with particular attention paid to the effects of diatomy. If unanticipated cardiac implantable electronic device interaction occurs, temporarily suspend the procedure until the source of interference can be identified and eliminated or managed. SpO2 for all cardiac implantable electronic device patients receiving anesthetic care. Invasive arterial pressure monitoring provides additional bit-to-bit -bit evidence of mechanical capture. It may add valuable information in patients with cardiac failure. Peripheral nerve stimulators are considered safe if they are distant from the device and that the stimulus is not in a vector parallel to that of the pacemaker current. Cardiac output monitoring is recommended for surgery with the potential for significant hemodynamic compromise. Central venous lines may dislodge the electrodes. Site of central venous excess in the upper body should be chosen well away from the site of lead implantation. Avoid passing guide wires into the heart, which can precipitate arrhythmias or dislodge CIED leads. Potential sources of EMI includes electrocautery, radiofrequency ablation, lithotripsy, MRI, radiation therapy, electroconvulsive therapy, etc. Potential responses of the CIED towards EMIs. Oversensing is the most common permanent pacemaker interaction. The device inappropriately registers myocardial activity when none exists, leading to failure to pace in the context of no intrinsic electrical activity. Pacemakers may interpret diatomy noise as cardiac electrical activity and be falsely inhibited. This may lead to significant hemodynamic compromise in a patient who is permanent pacemaker dependent. Overpacing The pulse generator fires despite intrinsic activity. This risks triggering malignant tachyarrhythmias. Reprogramming may occur, usually to a backup mode. Damage to device circuitry. Thermal damage. Pacing wires may act as aerials and cause heating where they contact the endocardium. Shock delivery. EMI may be falsely interpreted as a shockable rhythm by an ICD and results in a risk of intraoperative shock delivery. Disabling the defibrillator function of a device before exposure to EMI is therefore advised. Microshock. Microshock occurs when very minute currents in the region of 50 to 100 microamps induces ventricular fibrillation if they are applied directly to the myocardium. Microshock occurs only to the electrically susceptible patient that has an external conduit that is in direct contact with the heart. Ventricular fibrillation due to microshock can be produced by a current that is below the threshold of human perception. Microshock can occur in special situations in which the patient accidentally becomes part of an electrical circuit. Microshock requires an electrical contact applied directly over a small area of the myocardium and which can be earthed through the patient. Direct electrical contact applied to the myocardium can occur via intracardiac devices such as a pacemaker lead, central venous catheter, pulmonary artery catheter, and temperature probe in the esophagus. Sources of electric current in microshock may include faulty equipment, even with very low leakage currents, but which is connected to the intracardiac device, or a person holding a pacing wire in one hand while touching the leakage source with the other. Managing potential sources of electromagnetic interference. Reduce EMI towards cardiac implantable electronic devices to avoid inappropriate shocks or pacing. Electrocautery. Avoid whenever possible. Diatomy is the commonest source of EMI found in the operation theater. Advise surgeon to use bipolar electrocautery or ultrasonic scalpel, harmonic if possible, and use short intermittent bursts. Avoid unipolar diatomy whenever possible. If monopolar diatomy is necessary, ensure that the pacing function of a cardiac implantable electronic device is altered 
to an asynchronous pacing mode in the pacing-dependent patient, and suspend an implantable cardioverter defibrillator's anti-tachycardia and defibrillator function if present. Minimize the risk of EMI for monopolar electrocautery. The indifferent electrode should be sighted as far distant as possible from the pacemaker. Factor of the current should not pass through or near the pacemaker. The return electrode should be located below the thorax. Keep the pacemaker out of the path between the surgical site and the return plate. Current should not be applied across the chest, and its strength and duration of use should be minimal. Use short intermittent and irregular bursts of electrosurgery at the lowest feasible energy levels. Cutting diatomy causes more of a problem compared to coagulation diatomy. If the surgeon requests higher than normal power settings on the diatomy, the return plate and cable must be immediately inspected to ensure that it is functioning and properly positioned. Diatomy electrode that is dropped or damaged must be removed immediately from the OR and thoroughly tested by a qualified biomedical engineer. Avoid waving the activated electrode over the generator. Current field should be at right angles to the pacing leads. Diatomy cables should be kept well away from the site of the implant. Broadly speaking, Oversensing as a complication of EMI is unlikely for procedures where the application of diatomy and the return electrode are below the level of the umbilicus. Radiofrequency ablation involves the continuous application of radiofrequency energy via an emitting electrode to cause local heating and tissue coagulation. Ensure that the pacing function of a cardiac implantable electronic device is altered to an asynchronous pacing mode in the pacing-dependent patient and ICD's anti-tachycardia function suspended, defibrillation function of ICD suspended, there is no contact between the ablation catheter and the generator and leads, and the radio frequency's current path is far away from the generator and leads as possible. Extracorporal shockwave lithotripsy. Shock waves are acoustic pressure waves created from various sources such as electromagnetic, piezoelectric, electroconductive, and electrohydraulic sources. The waveform comprises of a compressive and tensile phase, which generates acoustic energy for stone disintegration, lithotripsy. Risk of CIED dysfunction is low, but there have been case reports of pacing suppression and backup safety mode reversion. Ensure that the CIED is checked within one month of the lithotripsy. The lithotripter should be kept at least six inches away from the CIED. The beam should not be focused near the CIED, lithotripsy pulses should be timed with the ECG, and rate modulation should be deactivated. Diagnostic radiation generally does not have a significant impact on the CIED function. However, rare case reports exist that report inappropriate sensing and electronic reset with higher radiation doses from newer generation multi-slice CT scans. Radiation therapy are considered safe Direct radiation of the CIED should be avoided. The CIED may be needed to be recited if it is located directly within the field of radiation. Device function should be verified frequently in the case of radiation-induced reversion to a backup safety mode. Backup safety mode is usually VVI, but is manufacturer-specific. Magnetic resonance imaging. MRI is usually contraindicated in patients with CIED. MRI conditional pacemakers and ICDs. Device design modifications includes reduced ferromagnetic components, a sensor designed to resist the magnetic field, and robust, well-insulated circuitry. These types of CIEDs can be used only in certain well-defined conditions produced by manufacturers, such as specific MRI systems, combined use of generator and leads designated MRI compatible, the pacing system in place for longer than 6 weeks, and specific programming of the device outside the MRI safety zone. Before the MRI scan, perform the following. Interrogate the CIED. Suspend the anti-tachycardia function of an ICD if present. Adhere to all product labeling of a MRI conditional CIED, including activating MRI mode to suspend the anti-tachycardia function of a MRI conditional ICD. In the pacing-dependent patient, Alter the pacing function of the CIED to an asynchronous pacing mode. Ensure that 
an individual capable of programming the CIED is either readily available for consultation or in attendance for the duration of the MRI scan whenever dictated by institutional policy. After the MRI scan, re-interrogate the CIED and restore its permanent settings. Ensure that a standardized workflow and or institutional protocol is in place and followed. Move the patient outside of the immediate MRI area when the use of the following are required. External defibrillator or monitor, CIED programmer, or other MRI unsafe equipment. Ensure that an individual capable of performing advanced cardiac life support is present for the duration of the MRI scan. Radio frequency identification devices. Avoid using these devices in close proximity to the CIED whenever possible. Monitor for signs of EMI. Be prepared to stop using the RFID if interference occurs. Electroconvulsive therapy. Electrical stimulus from ECT may cause pacemaker inhibition. Seizure activity from ECT may cause prolonged oversensing. ECT often occurs in isolated sites and this adds complexity to planning. Recommendations. Alter the pacing function of a CIED to an asynchronous pacing mode in a pacing dependent patient. This may risk arrhythmias when intrinsic electrical activity exists. Suspend an ICD's anti-tachycardia function if present. The defibrillator function of an ICD should be disabled. Seizure activity may trigger an inappropriate shock either due to EMI or due to marked reactive sinus tachycardia that encroaches on the ICD tachycardia trigger rate. Monitor for and be prepared to manage post-convulsive sinus tachycardia. Monitor for and treat ventricular arrhythmias that may occur secondary to the hemodynamic effects of ECT. Tissue expanders in breast surgery. Tissue expanders that use magnets to orientate a needle to allow fluid filling to occur should be avoided. Their close proximity to a CIED may risk magnetic switch activation with conversion to asynchronous pacing or failure of an ICD to detect a tachyarrhythmia. Transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. TENS is contraindicated in patients with CIED as Transcutaneous impulses may cause inappropriate sensing, potentially leading to inhibition of pacemaker function or inappropriate shock administration by an ICD. Mobile phones are generally considered safe. However, avoid direct placement of any phone onto a CIED as they remain a source of EMI and can potentially activate the magnet mode of the device. Medical equipment with wireless technology such as infusion pumps monitoring devices and ultrasound probes should be distanced away from a CIED since these devices may provide a source of EMI. Managing intraoperative arrhythmias. Many patients with CIEDs will have impaired cardiac function and the potential for development of malignant arrhythmias. Monitoring and anesthetic technique should reflect the need to ensure myocardial optimization in these patients. To avoid arrhythmias and or interference with pacemaker capture, Monitor for and treat hypoxia, hypercapnia, acidosis, and electrolyte abnormalities, especially of potassium and magnesium. Preparations for treating potential dysrhythmias should be available before, during, and after all procedures with electromagnetic interference potential. External defibrillator, external pacemaker, and isoprenaline should be available. External defibrillator or pacing pads should be attached to the patient with CIEDs prior to surgery particularly when access to the chest wall might be difficult. Pads should be placed at least 10 to 15 cm away from the edge of the CIED to avoid damage to the device and damage to the myocardium as a consequence of excess current flow. External pacemaker. Capture can usually be achieved at currents of 50 to 100 MA using external pads. Isoprenaline may be required if pacemaker failure occurs. Follow standard ALS procedures and the usual recommended external defibrillation energy levels in treating arrhythmias. Drug choices and fluid considerations. Succinylcholine should be used with caution since fasciculations may cause oversensing and result in pacing inhibition. ICDs have robust sensing algorithms and inappropriate shock delivery is unlikely. Halotain. Alteration of pacemaker sensitivity by halotin has been described in older pacemaker models. 
antibiotic prophylaxis should be carefully considered depending on the surgery. CIED infection is difficult to diagnose and treat with a mortality of up to 35%. Inotropic drugs. Negative inotropic drugs should be avoided. Positive inotropes may precipitate tachyarrhythmias in susceptible patients. Fluid balance. Avoid hypovolemia. Patients with a fixed ventricular rate will be unable to respond to hypovolemia with an increase in heart rate. This may compromise end organ perfusion and oxygen delivery. For patients with severe heart failure, loss of AV synchrony may precipitate hemodynamic compromise. Telemetric programmer and cardiac technician should be close at hand. Post-operative management. Location of care. Manage the patient with CIEDs in high-dependency recovery environments with continuous monitoring and full resuscitation equipment immediately available. Monitor and display a patient's cardiac rate and rhythm throughout the immediate post-op period as required by ASA standards and as indicated by the patient's condition. Have backup pacing and defibrillator equipment immediately available. For CIED that was reprogrammed pre-op or intraoperatively, until the CIED's permanent settings are restored, the patient should remain in a monitored environment, have his or her cardiac rate and rhythm continuously monitored and displayed, and have backup pacing and cardioversion defibrillation equipment immediately available. A post-op CIED interrogation should be performed whenever emergency surgery occurred without appropriate pre-op CIED evaluation. If a magnet was used to deactivate a CIED intraoperatively, when anti-tachycardia therapy was disabled rather than temporarily suspended with a magnet placement, when delivery of anti-tachycardia therapy occurred, and when CIED malfunction is suspected, such as significant EMI occurred in close proximity to the CIED, invasive procedure was performed in close proximity to the CIED, or when large fluid shifts occurred. Cardiac physiologists should be consulted regarding any adverse events related to the CIED during the perioperative period. If interrogation determines that the CIED settings are inappropriate, reprogram to newly appropriate settings, or to reactivate the defibrillator function of an ICD and any rate modulator pacing functions if they were suspended. Emergency cardioversion or defibrillation Certain situations may require emergent external cardioversion or defibrillation of a patient with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Before attempting to emergently externally cardiovert or defibrillate such a patient, terminate all sources of electromagnetic interference, remove the magnet to re-enable the ICD's anti-tachycardia therapies, observe the patient for appropriate anti-tachycardia therapy from the ICD, determine whether there is a need to re-enable the ICD's anti-tachycardia therapy if it was disabled by programming. Proceed with emergency external cardioversion or defibrillation when needed. If the above activities fail to restore the ICD's anti-tachycardia therapy, and if the anti-tachycardia therapy cannot be restored expeditiously. External cardioversion or defibrillation in a patient with an ICD should follow ALS guidelines for delivered energy level and pad placement. Have cardioversion and defibrillation pads placed so that they are not directly over the CIED to minimize current flowing through the generator and leads. Interrogate the CIED immediately after external cardioversion or defibrillation is performed. Expected benefits of the above-mentioned measures includes successful procedure and reduced frequency or severity of adverse outcomes. Adverse outcomes associated with a CIED includes CIED damage, inability to deliver pacing or shocks, lead tissue interface damage, changes in pacing behavior, electrical reset to backup mode, inappropriate ICD anti-tachycardia therapy, and adverse clinical outcomes such as hypotension, tachyarrhythmias, bradyarrhythmias, and myocardial tissue damage. These are my references. Thank you.